Welcome to the Euphoria Podcast, uh, Season 2, Week 7. No, Day Episode 7. Episode 7. Hurry <laughs> <laughs> <Carry> on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go again, okay? I'll wait five seconds again. Sorry. No, it's perfect. Keep going. <laughs> keep yeah, going, keep going, going man. Uh, alright, alright. So, welcome guys to the Euphoria Podcast. This is uh, Week 2. No. Season, season two. 2. Episode 7. And we are your hosts, uh, me, Raymond Kasing Sang, with Erlen Nukduk Home. Joined by, uh, of course, Martin Defischeldunga. <laughs> the podcast is available on uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Currently, the best intro we've ever had. Thank you very much. Uh, Draco sadly is out sick this week. Uh, I was out sick last week, and for some reason, we can't be here together. But I think it's probably an upgrade that we just get to be you, us, us three here, veterans. Season three pro, season four, five pro. Oh. I mean, Super Hawk Crew, was that really being a pro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really. I mean, I wasn't. Uh, actually, I, I, won't, I won't lie, it was uh, not the best team, but <laughs> we, we were still in us, yes, at the time, so it, it does count. Could you really? Yeah. I mean, you guys made. We were top four. Top four. Oh, that I do not know. Actually. Oh, that you guys ended like top three regular season. Yeah, regular season. I remember that, yeah. We're actually quite good. Because your lineup back then was, it was you, uh, Mr. Rallis. Yes. <clears throat> Impaler. Yes. Was it Selfie Mid? Yes. And your top laner was Mimer? Yes. That is a lot of old school names right there. Yeah. It was a very, very interesting lineup because uh, a lot of uh, dis disagreements may have happened during that time, <laughs> which I cannot really talk about. Uh, but basically, <laughs> yeah, it, it was fun. <laughs> Because I also remember season four was kind of the <clears throat> the worst year for competitive League of Legends in Europe. Uh, I remember a lot of our teams were really bad. Um, we had a lot of players not there in the LCS, uh, Nuke Duck being one of them for that year. Um, and obviously NIP failed, to, failed to qualify, losing 3-0 to KMT, the team that became Rocket with Yankers and Overpow. Do you remember those great times, Nuke Duck? Yeah, I, I, I do remember those times, even though I hope sometimes I wouldn't. <laughs> One of the things I always remember, because uh, we obviously lost really hard to uh, Kale Midlane uh, from Overpow. And I remember, Nuke Duck, uh, you specifically had been practicing Riven mid lane, and you were convinced that you could take him down with Riven mid, and everything just backfired. <laughs> I knew where this was going. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like anything when you think back? Was that like a, a, a career-defining moment for you in any way? Or was it just like, I hate this, it's never happened, let's move on? I mean, I, I think Riven is quite good against Kale, but it was just like so, oh, I mean, so overpowered. So I, I I just like misjudged the strength of it. Okay, yeah, I mean, it happened. It happened. Obviously, then you came back season five. Because yeah. that's kind of one of the things is... Um, a lot of our viewers have only joined the last couple of years. So they obviously will know you guys because you've been in the LCS now for a long time. But they don't actually know how long. They don't know your history from back in the day as well. Um, so I think we can do a super quick little rundown of, you know, the history of Nuke Dog and Kissing Because... I think with you, Nuke Dog, if, if we take you first, obviously, season three was when you got into the LCS on Lemon Dogs. And yeah, right. We qualified like with uh, just with no organization back then, just like a group of five, like me, Tabs, Sorrow, and Nunia Jungle, and we will mm -hmm. fail their support. And we qualified, and then we became Lemon Dogs. And then uh, we obviously went to Worlds that season, and then switched to NIP and got uh, relegated. And then we failed to promote the next time against yep. Millennium. And then I was like out for vacation for a bit. <laughs> and then, yeah, I joined Rock Garden Season 5, uh, played there that year, and then played Vitality for the next two years. And then, yeah, now I'm in Schalke. So, been around forever, basically. Like saying Season 4, Super Hard Crew. Didn't really get you famous back then, I would say. I mean, you were, when you joined, I remember people considered you a good support, but <clears throat> the following year, I think the whole Kasing thing took off on H2K yeah. when you joined. I got a bit lucky though. Because, really? Like, I, know I had some, actually, I had like two other offers during that time as well. Like, not just H2K, but uh, there was uh, MYM, obviously. Oh, M, yeah, the one that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole fiasco that happened with MYM, but uh, that, was another, that was one of them. And another one was uh, another 
I don't remember actually at this time of what the name was, but an LCS team. Yes, and the thing is, I chose HTK because it was one of those teams where I thought, you know, I needed like a kind of a new change. I had never really played with anyone that team before, so I just wanted a, a kind of like a new start because Super Hot Crew was definitely not something I liked. <laughs> it was it's one of those teams that you know kind of you know you have expectations right for like a team how to improve you know that you have a good team because everyone is very try uh, everyone's trialing because you're an mm -hmm, LCS blah blah, blah. Mm -hmm. yeah that that was not the goal there so they had a lot of problems and improving was definitely not on the list that that we wanted to do and it was like there was so much stuff that happened there that obviously I can't really go into detail and which which has happened long ago. But it's a definition of like what you don't want in an LCS team, you know, because it's just the fact that there was like barely any cohesion in the team. There was no structure. There was like <laughs> I can't explain how I uh, I can't explain how bad it was basically. <laughs> but I did obviously learn from that, you know, as a, as a player because at the time I was a new player, you know, from Challenger. Yeah, I mean, I you're played, a rookie. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I just played like from solo queue. Um, I was just someone who was really good mechanically, I think. I think I played like Nami as my first game in Super Crew. Like I subbed for them actually. Um in London, yeah. in Wembley Arena. And I think I played like quite well actually, considering it was my first time. But I obviously enjoyed the experience. Then after Super Crew, obviously it was H2K. And then after H2K, when we went to Worlds and blah blah blah, it was fun while while it lasted. And this fly is uh, a bit annoying. We have one fly, it lives here. <laughs> we literally can't get rid of it for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, um, anyway, then after H2K, I played in Vitality with Nuke Dog, actually. We played yeah. like the first the first roster. Which was actually considered like a super team. I remember when the lineup was built, you know, you two guys together. It was Jan and AD Carry as well. Jungle at that time was... Shook. Shook, and then top lane was Capo Shard. Yes. Yeah. And like, so on paper at the moment, this is obviously uh, a lineup in season six with a lot of big names, could rival maybe the best teams. You guys had a great regular season as well. I remember the famous Bard Zillion combo that was oh, yeah. pulled out a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no one could deal with, uh, except for maybe a Thresh in there. I, I didn't even know that Thresh would take Pryo with the Lantern. I thought they would, they would always get stunned first or damaged. Yeah, I thought it was a bug no, as well. They, they will now. Now they get stunned, I think. Oh, is like, it fixed? It's yeah, fixed now. Yeah, they, oh, they okay. removed that, that stuff now. But that was obviously the year after you guys had a great regular season. 3 0 in the quarterfinal. And it kind of went downhill from there with Vitality. I feel like, do you guys agree? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have uh, me and Nuke anymore. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But. Yeah, we, we played the next season too, you know, but it was, uh, I mean, our, our team was kind of like in shadows, you know, it was right. like, I had zero synergy with like my jungle back then. And then when the meta switched to like more like mid jungle meta, like we were like so lost. And then on top of that, like I played like bad against Fnatic, so like we just got rolled over. And then <laughs> after we did like some Korean roster swaps. Oh, that's and, true. Uh, yes. Yeah, I got told my AD carry could speak English, but uh, very good. That was police. <laughs> that <laughs> yes, joined. it was. <laughs> Probably one of the worst roster changes that we've actually ever had in Europe. If I, th I mean, really, I think the Kasing for the Chani one was pretty, pretty worse. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let, let's let's not talk about that right that now. That one was also bad. <laughs> I still remember the police one when it happened. I was like, wait, this guy was not good enough to be in any LCS. Why would he ever work in Europe? Was there any like insight into this roster change that you guys can share? Or was it just like, whatever? I, I think it was something like we wanted to get an ADC sub. And then I think like Yarnan took it really personally. So okay. he didn't <laughs> want to play anymore. And then we were just stuck with, with police yeah, as the yeah. only ADC. Oh. He was the only one that was like kind of available that you could take a gamble on, I guess. But yeah. Downhill from there. Downhill from there. I actually, it does set up like a quick question. Like uh, for a moment, we had a lot of teams in Europe trying to get imports, like Koreans uh, coming over, two different ones uh, almost on every team, for a moment at least. It's kind of stopped now. Like, we have Wadid, obviously, in G2, but he's a bit of an odd case because he never actually played in LCK, and, and he joined EU LCS as his first kind of thing. Uh, and then, obviously, Rocket with Profit and, and Blank right now, but most teams have stopped trying to use Korean players. Like, is that purely because of synergy and communication that's just not worth it, or...? I mean, it, it depends. Like, so the top tier Koreans are like obviously like super good, but they also ask for like at, at least like three times more money than like even top European players. Mm -hmm. So, 
they're like extremely expensive and then you don't know exactly if they're gonna you know like try for their yeah. life or not you know because we had Ashani and like I can't say how much but this guy was getting he was getting paid quite a lot you know but he was uh, <laughs> but, but he was happy with the money he got you know so right. he was maybe not trying that hard I mean I think Koreans as a from from like general standpoint I feel like usually you would get Korean players if you want for you want them for like the mechanics right and their game knowledge technically but they have to or in order for a Korean import to be successful I feel like that Korean has to kind of be known first like for what you can see like whether he's played in LCK or um <clears throat> LS it's not LSP the, the other one the LPO challenge. no 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 oh Korean challenge yeah yes yeah, Korean challenge sorry and I feel like most of the cases, I just feel Europe, uh, European players are probably better because of the fact that you can communicate how they will get better. Mm -hmm. Whereas Koreans will kind of have like a, a limit, in my opinion. Because it's the fact that you can't really go that in depth in maybe in analysis or in like post game feedback and stuff. And I think I personally would prefer like a full European roster just because of the fact that you can all or like be on the same page as five. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, the only Korean that I've ever played with that I felt like could have a, like not have a limit was Mujin. And you've probably seen him both Red Bulls and like in Flash Wolves now that he's played in. And, Doing really well. And I think he was one of those junglers that I felt like, you know, has really, really good potential as not just because he's Korean, but because of the fact that he could speak English to the point where, you know, he can actually understand why we're, you know, why we're doing something. And I just feel like it's usually a coin flip because of the fact that Koreans, usually their hard work is right, but if you they, if they come to Europe, it's kind of like holiday for them. It's like if you were to go to another country like NA, for example, right? And when I was in LA, and I felt like, oh, wow. <laughs> a riff rivals? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we went zero free in group, you know? But, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that it kind of depends on your environment, right? Whereas like in Korea, uh, usually for players, you kind of, um, you're kind of stuck playing solo queue the entire day. And you don't really have a life because of the fact that if you're expected to play solo queue, you're mm -hmm. expected to just play solo queue, sleep, eat, and repeat, and keep doing that again and again and again. Because Koreans believe that the more you play solo queue, the, the better your uh, the better chance you have because of the fact that if your opponents are not playing solo queue, then and you are, then you have that advantage, right? But sometimes I feel like spamming solo queue to the point where you don't even you know you just don't have a, have a life or anything like that is just not good. I gotta ask you, New Dog, about that one specifically, because I know you've always been very focused on playing a lot of solo queue. Uh, is that still yeah. the case for you now? Do you actually feel like it is important? Uh, yeah, I think it's like very important, but it's just I can't play, let's say, more than 10 games a day before I feel like I really like don't have the energy to try hard right. anymore. <laughs> but I think it's especially important if you play like some kind of role that you have to learn a lot of champions. Uh, so, I mean, I think... I think spamming solo queues is, is like quite good and you, you definitely have to play like at least like 10 games a day like with scrims you know so if you scrim six games you at least have to play like four solo queues okay how does a guy who who values solo queue highly stay stuck in diamond two for so long because you tweeted yesterday you just made diamond one and uh, that was it like, i was like wait how is he only making diamond one doesn't make any sense I mean, like, I, I just want to learn champions, so I just, like, turn off my brain and I just play. Okay. <laughs> and, like, usually, like, far too aggressive, and I just, I mean, I die a lot, and I just, like, practice my champion, yeah. Because I know some other players have done the same, like, Shook in the past was, like, notoriously stuck in Diamond 5 playing Ash Jungle and stuff, and I was just yeah. like, how is this even good practice in any way, but... <laughs> that, that's not good practice, though, Ash Jungle. <laughs> good, okay. I, I'm glad we agree on that one. Uh, before we move on, I have to do a quick update on the bet. I actually forgot before. I just found this discussion very interesting. And we can probably go here for another three hours about anything. Uh, super quick with the bets. Uh, the Memento bet was delayed because Drake has been sick uh, also this weekend. Uh, hopefully he's back this week and he can actually do it. Uh, my bet with, uh, with Did or my punishment where we have to eat the spicy ramen up there will be done on Saturday after G2 versus Fnatic. We think we, we need a banger game. G2 losing to Schalke wasn't good enough, so we moved it. We needed with Dieter to actually want to talk about something. Uh, it's going to be horrible. Uh, it's hopefully going to be fun as well, but that should be done on Saturday specifically. We actually haven't discussed any bets yet at all, uh, even before we went live, so we might have to wing it, or if we can't find anything, that's it. But we'll see what happens with that one later. Uh, but also some of the things we will be talking about, we do have to do playoff predictions. Uh, we, we're going to log in at top six, 
that's how it's going to be. It's not going to change three, we- three weeks in advance. And also one of the big things is uh, shot calling and titles. And I actually want to go straight to the title now because we have Nuke Duck, famous for the title Year of the Duck or Year of Nuke Duck, depending on who you ask. So uh, obviously whoever came up with this name is super brilliant. True like, genius. Extremely smart. Yeah. Uh, probably spent months like doing a bunch of brainstorming on branding and like had to check for copyright that no one else had taken this. Uh, I can definitely tell everyone that Year of the Duck has not been taken by anyone. Uh, Nuke Duck, does this title annoy you or do you think it's funny? Uh, it's a little bit of both, I think. Okay. Yeah, it can be like, for example, in a season, I like I play for the most part quite well, you know. Yeah. And then, like, and then even in the end, if you don't make end up making it, you know, and and have some bad games, like people don't don't think like, well, he has played like pretty good this season, you know. It was like oh, again, he tried to be like year of the duck, but it's never year of the it's duck. Never year <laughs> of the duck. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, because obviously, uh, I, when did it start? Last year? Two years ago? Something like that? Uh, I, I don't I, I think it started this year. I'm not did sure. it really? So, okay, it might have started this year. I don't remember when it started specifically. I remember uh, how it started, however, was we sat in, uh, in one of our meetings where we, we come up with what graphics we want to show in the game specifically. That we, you know, the caster can use to talk and the viewers can look at it and be like, wow, this guy is whatever, number one in every stat. Um, and at the time, see, I believe it started last year when you did really well in Vitality. You were the only player who was able to get ahead on Vitality. You played like Quinn mid and like champs like that. And you, you had to do everything basically from what I remember. Uh, and I was like, okay, this guy, we, we have to do something to hype up Vitality. There needs to be something that can latch, like, like people latch onto so they want to watch. It's going to be Nuke Duck. And I remember when, when I mentioned it, uh, people were like, Nuke Duck, again, he's been here for so many years, we always try and hype him, and then, you know, the fans don't latch on because he doesn't make playoffs or whatever it is. Uh, but I was like, no, no, let's try. And we should go over the top, so we do Year of the Duck. Is it going to happen? Is it going to be the year? So I really apologize if it's annoying for you. Uh, I tried to push it less last week. But it's hard not to all the time. Uh, but I mean, I think from a branding perspective, it is pretty good, right? Like people talk about you, people interact with with the meme, basically, even though it can be annoying for you. Yeah, I I, I guess it's it's pretty good branding. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not that focused on that myself. So I... okay, do you think it's ever been the year of the duck? Um, that's I mean. Probably not. I mean, it's kind of like a question of definition, you know, like, I don't know what this exactly means, you know, so... No one knows. Yeah, exactly. That's part of the branding right there. Yeah, but we, but I mean, we're doing pretty well right now, so if we, if we keep it up, then maybe. I think if if you guys do well in playoffs and you are the standout player, I think we can finally say it was the year of the duck. Should we agree on that? I mean, it's otherwise we'll have to win, you know. Like, I mean, yeah. Or win the whole thing is another. Should be a, yeah, this should, should be a fine bar to set, I think. Okay, so get to playoffs. You perform very well in playoffs, or win the whole thing. <laughs> or I guess it's kind of both. You know, they fit together. Uh, Kasing, you don't really have a title anymore. You used to be Kasing effect, but then you killed it on Euphoria by saying it was the Yanin effect, and you didn't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's like. I mean, I do, like, obviously uh, make my AD carries a bit better, like, whenever, with, 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 with whatever AD carry I play with. Okay, how do you make them better? Because I talk to them. You cook for them? No, talk to them. Oh, I thought you said you cooked for them. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. No, 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 no. I mean, it's just, like, I mean, one thing I noticed is about bot lane is that most bot lanes actually don't really talk that much. Mm-hmm. And... For me, like I'm a, kind of a vocal player, so just talking about general like what you're doing in lane or cooldowns, for example, is like really basic. But people don't, still don't do that, even whilst being like an LCS player. It, I don't know if you've noticed, but I I have noticed this. I mean, we, we don't get to listen a lot. No, no, no. no. I mean, being said. if you do, right? You I mean, we had we had a mic check this week where it was Han Sama killing the bot lane of unicorns. Yeah. And nothing was said for like 30 seconds of trading. 
and and he kills him. No one says a word. The entire <laughs> entire like look into the clip is just Senkuk's talking about pushing mid. And then nothing is said bot lane, and he gets a first. I mean, that's the thing. I, I feel like the enemy uh, AD was trolling quite a lot, but uh, regardless they got hit by a lot that, of bindings. Regardless of that, it was just like how do I say? It? Obviously, some bot lanes don't need to talk because they're just that good, you know. Like Hansa mm -hmm. and Mickey, uh -huh. they are one of the best. So or they are the best, <laughs> if anything. But I just feel like in general case, you sh you should talk a lot. Like as a bot lane, you're two people, you know, not one person. You're not a solo laner. So that's just one of the things that. I bring a lot, I guess, or that I value a lot compared to other sports. So how do we make that into a title? I mean, I don't know about that. Because, <laughs> like, casting Effect obviously was, like, one of the meme things in H2K. It was. But I felt like it was more of a team effort rather than me. Um, it's a good branding, though. I mean, yeah, it is. Like, it was, it's even on a t-shirt that I wanted to bring today, yeah, which I unfortunately... Oh, yeah, uh, you forgot your gift. Yes. Unlike this other guy. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Man, it's on my desk. God damn it. Oh, my God. I'll bring it next Friday. You, you'll see. All right. This Friday. So everything for, for everyone who listens, we need a title for Kissing. Something we can brand. It's not Kissing Effect. We can't use that right now, even though it was great branding. Year of the Dog is already taken. Year of Kissing doesn't sound that great. No, no, no. Uh, the guy who talks a lot doesn't sound that great either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, there was like the quick shot one. He says like Kissing Kaching, which is like really catchy. But that was back when I played like fresh, right? So it was like every hook I did was Kissing Kaching. Yeah, now you play Janna and you, sh you exactly. shield what, what can I say about that? Well, e <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just say Ego. <laughs> That's my title right now. <laughs> but man. Uh. Uh, okay, we need a title for you. That's fair. It's good to know. Uh, also, uh, Nuke Dog, if you ever want us to stop pushing the Year of the Duck, you can just tell us. It will stop instantly. You know, they cut my segment when I tried to do it before the G2 game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that there. And then you carried the whole thing, and I was like, Jesus Christ, we could have set this up perfectly. No, they, they actually cut it, or it was planned? <laughs> Broadcast magic, baby. You will never know. Okay, they didn't cut it. Yeah. That was never a <laughs> <laughs> I had to do this intro real quick, and then it went into a break screen. Now I ruined the magic. There you go. <laughs> It was supposed, like, to be fair, uh, I've wanted to do a segment every week because the one I did on you two weeks ago was horrible. Like, I failed. I messed it up so badly. So it was to be like a breakdown of why pro players hype you. Um, actually, we can quickly talk about that. Uh, as I mentioned much earlier in the, in the podcast, because a lot of people haven't watched for many years, they don't know, you know, the nuke duck of season three. And now I played against you, and there were two players I hated playing against. It was you, and it was Mithy. Mithy, because he was way better than every support back then, it was actually sad. Like, we were all garbage, except for Mithy. Um, so you just lost to him every time, no matter what you did. Uh, and then you, because... I don't even remember. We even tried to 2v1 mid you in, like, one of the games at the start of the summer split. And you played yeah. Vladimir, and it went horrible. Because... Uh, mechanically, you were super good, and you also just seemed way smarter than most mid laners, understanding how to split push at least, which was kind of the thing with Zed and, and the meta back then. So when you joined, I think pretty quickly Lemon Dogs became the best team in Europe. I think that's fair to say. Uh, yeah, I think like after like week five, six, or like four or five, we were we were the best. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you 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 got to number one, and it was like Zor Zero was one of the forgotten heroes who yeah. retired way too early. It was like the god of top lane who disappeared. Uh, he's he was in the army for a moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now I think, I think he's, he's done from the army now. Yeah, he's done now. I think he's just like uh, I don't know. He should probably work with something. He's a model now. He's a pretty boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But then, obviously, with, with you in the middle, like, did you notice any change in how, you know, your own play developed from back then in season three when it felt like you, you were 17 years old, you were shot calling your team around, you were killing people on assassins compared to, like, now? Have you changed a lot? Is that, like, are, are you much less explosive? Do you not feel as good anymore compared to other mid laners or... Uh, yeah, so definitely, like, the mid laners now are a lot better, let's mm -hmm. say, and also the other people on the map, you know, because, like, the people we were playing against in, in Season 3 were, like, quite, like, weak, let's say, mechanically, like, so, for example, when you try to 2-1 mid, you probably, you know, made some mistakes, because then, definitely. like, 
next season when I was laning 1v2 mid against Forgiven, for example, my turret would fall at like four minutes. Right. But it's, it's that, that people are much better now, but uh, mostly I'm the same. Like when I started back then, I, I felt like actually I had my own way to play the game, kind of. Like I felt like every like top team back then, like the top from season two, mm -hmm. they all played like, like extremely slow uh, way of playing. And they just like prayed, prayed that the enemy team would like team fight them at 30 minutes. You know, it was like basically their game plan. So I felt like I just uh, had like kind of like an instinct on how to, like to play the game, like just like better than them. Uh, and I, I still feel like I have that kind of thing where I f can kind of feel like how, how we should play the game. So I think I still carry that with that. Mm -hmm. Kissing, was you, did you ever buy into the Nuke Dog hype? <laughs> Mm. Or were you like, nah, this guy's never gonna be like the greatest <laughs> mid laner or No no, I mean I, I always like even before I played in Nuke Dog, I always knew that he was uh a really, really solid player, like really consistent because of the fact that, you know, he always kind of is able to hold his tower and never let it go. <laughs> <laughs> hold uh, his tower. <laughs> that's the criteria yeah, that's... we have. <laughs> no, but on a like the main game goal. On on a on a real level, I, I feel like Nuke Dog was, has always been a good player, you know, no matter what, because just because of the fact that he has to. Oh, he has been in, in the pro scene for a long time, even though there has been a, a time that he was not in for specific oh, reasons. Yes, um, but otherwise, it's like even before playing. Yeah, with New Talk, after playing with him, I felt like he was always good. I never had that much problems at all with him. So it's just a shame that uh, everything else was not so good <laughs> around it. Do we blame the teammates here or? Like, why did you never get back to an EU LCS final? And Kasing, have you ever made an EU LCS final? No, only semifinals. Only semifinals. Like, so Kasing, why have you never made an EU LCS final? Bad because teams, your own fault, or? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of reasons I could say, but ultimately, you know, I think I could have definitely performed better. Like, I don't think I'm the, how do I say it? I don't think I'm one to, to speak about other people's problems when I'm the one that can also improve way more than other people, like, than anything else. Mm. So, I think it's myself. Why have you never returned? Because you made it season three. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I had, like, a lot of periods so far where, I, like, I was not playing that well. So, like, it's been really up and down and I think, like, the difference, like, that every season from, like, the season where I made the final, I uh, was like much like less impactful than back then, so I think yeah, if just had a lot of up and up and downs basically in play, and it was never like one season where we just where I just play like well the whole season, mm -hmm. and then also into playoffs, I think so yeah. Okay, I mean it's cool to hear obviously that both of you guys are actually putting some weight on yourself, uh, saying you guys could have done more uh, as well for this because I think it's just uh, some of the questions from a lot of people regarding you know Europe. G2 and Fnatic make the final, you know, they win every single time. There's so many other players getting hyped up. Why are these guys not succeeding? I think it's always going to be interesting to look at, but we have to move on because uh, we've already spent a lot of time talking about a lot of different stuff. Playoff predictions. Uh, it is the hot topic. A couple of weeks left. It's summer split. Everyone always looks at playoffs and then worlds. Like, it's literally what anyone cares about. Uh, behind you, we have the standings as it is right now. Uh, right there on the wall. Uh, so currently, if people are not aware of the standings, we have Misfits in first place, Fnatic second, G2 third, tied for fourth. We have Schalke and Vitality. Then we have Rocket Splice tied for sixth place, Unicorns number eight, Giants number nine, and H2K at 0 12th at the moment, down at the bottom. Definitely not making playoffs, so we can, uh, we can remove them instantly. But I want to try and lock in what we think is going to be the actual top six by the end of week nine. Uh, we have obviously two guys here from middle of the table teams right now. Uh, if we start with just number one and two, do you guys think it stays the way it is now? Misfits number one, Fnatic number two? Or do you still think it's it's going to change? How many wins are there between them right now? Uh, so Misfits are currently sitting at 10 and two and Fnatic are nine and three, so one win. Who do they play next week? Next week, there's a lot of questions here. Or well, this, this technically this week, but yeah. Uh, we, we play Misfits this week. You guys play Misfits, yeah. yeah. So that's a win for Misfits. Uh, <laughs> coming in right there. <laughs> Let me just check. I know they played each other already twice. So there's a, and they're 1-1. One, one. Uh, obviously, Fnatic stomped the last time uh, they played against each other. But I guess uh, Misfits schedule. 
the next few weeks is going to be dun, 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 dun. so week seven the upcoming week they have as you highlighted Schalke and then they play Giants so not the toughest schedule no flame intended in that one then Misfits will play H2K in week eight and they will also play against G2 so that's obviously going to be one of the big games and week nine for Misfits we have Vitality and Rocket so they have a couple of the middle of the table. They have G2, and then they have Giants down the bottom. Do they keep number one? I don't think so. No? What's going wrong with Misfits? I think Fnatic is just like on another level, kind of. I think Misfits are like likely to drop a few games. And I think if they get into a tiebreaker, they will probably lose against Fnatic. Okay. That's interesting. So they started like 9-0. Yeah. But they're only one win ahead, and I think they're like a bit weaker on current form than Fnatic. Do you guys know why they're weaker now compared to before? Or is it just other teams have caught up? Yeah, I think other teams caught up, and like Fnatic is just like so good, yeah. you know? It's, uh, they are just like a bit better, I think, and that's why, All right. why so I'll take it there. Yeah. thing, do you agree with Fnatic taking number one? Yeah. I feel like they're current form, Fnatic anyway, has been really, really good actually, even without Reckless. Um, I just, I feel like Misfits, the reason why they were so, or had such a good start is just the fact that they were able to have a really good read on the meta, not to mention having uh, sustainable bot, uh, lanes that are like, oh sorry, they had really good lanes that are really strong individually, so Han Summer obviously and uh, Mickey in the bot lane, I feel like they're the type of bot lane that if the enemy, if they if they can punish you on the bot lane, they will snowball really, really hard. But if they cannot snowball, then you can watch Misfits as this place. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, no, but I, I actually agree with this. Like, I think like if they don't snowball from laning phase, they are like not like that strong. Right. Okay. So we put Fnatic number one. Do we lock in Misfits number two then? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. G2A is still uh, two wins behind at the moment. I've also been losing a bunch of games lately. So Fnatic, Misfits, that's locked. Third place in our playoff prediction. Uh, obviously, G2 Esports are sitting there right now. They're currently eight and four. But after Rift Rivals, they've only won two games and lost four, I believe it is, in total. Uh, obviously, lost to you guys uh Yesterday, no, not yesterday, but, yeah, but last weekend, a couple of days ago, uh, from this one getting released. And do you guys think these guys are actually bad now? Like, is it's a funnel thing? Just kind of the fact it's not there anymore. Is is that a problem for them? Is it people underperforming? Like, what's going on going going on with G two? It's definitely both. I think like some players are underperforming quite a bit. I think from them, <laughs> and could I were... guess Yankus based on your game? Uh, yeah, I mean, he had like a really off game, and I, I, he tend he had the off game like last week as well. So I think, yeah, I think they won't actually be third. Okay. And uh, obviously, remove a funnel is like really bad for them too because they they were like really good at it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think f the the fact that funnel was removed was uh, a really big hit for G two because I felt like funnel fit that team really perfectly, in my opinion, because they had a self-sufficient bot lane. They had a top laner that can pretty much, you know, win kind of most 1v1s. And if he doesn't, then of course, uh, Perks and Jankos always, always play to top, like no matter what. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's pretty much a great play style with Funnel. But if the fact that they practiced Funnel for so long, like for one or two months, I think, has it been here for two months, actually? Uh, probably one month. Was it I one month? Because it was, so after MSI, the patch that came out... Uh, there were like a couple of patches coming out every two weeks. Yeah. And the one, I believe, it was probably the one with the AD carry nerfs where they did the change to jungle camps yeah. as well in terms of experience and everything. And the single Rift Scuttler. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Around, it was around that time. So it was probably a month and a half, I okay. would say. Yeah. So they've, right. they've probably been practicing that for that long, you know, and maybe they, they don't play uh, standard, which they should, you know, because... That is still sometimes you're gonna have to play standard, and I think Yankos kind of took the biggest hit from this because you're playing like, you know, Brom, Brom every game, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's not that great for your mechanics. But uh, still, it's not that it's like that he's really really bad or anything. It's just the fact that they kind of lost their 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 groove, and I just feel it's you know they have to find that kind of balance again. Mm. And once they find that, then maybe they'll start winning again. 
So Nukedog, was Funnel overpowered or was it just strong for G2 specifically? Because not that many European teams found success with it. No, I think it was overpowered. Okay. So, I mean, any like any like Funnel Vitalia or Sayara Khan, if you were actually really good on it, I think it was like overpowered. Was there no proper counterplay against it? or? Uh, yeah, I actually think if you play really well, there was no proper counterplay. Okay. So G2 Esports picking up uh, a bunch of early wins based on that. Then letting Europe down against Echo Fox in the finals of Rift Rivals, getting saved by Splice. That's yeah. true. The greatest team we ever <laughs> sent to Rift Rivals. <laughs> they managed to beat Team Liquid. Oh man, I, I couldn't oh no, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even believe group stages. We were so bad. It was actually insane how bad you guys looked. It's like we forgot how to play the game. When um, you lost a hundred thieves, I was like, oof, wow. <laughs> Like, oh no no! <laughs> Those are the times I forgot already. To <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bring it back. I don't want to go back. Again. Okay, so Nuka, you're removing G2 from third place. Uh, Kasing, are you also removing G2 from third? Uh, the upcoming schedule, if we just take the the last couple of weeks, H2K, so they get a win. Uh, then they play Fnatic. That's match of the week. We can talk more about that bad boy later. They play Unicorns and they play against Misfits in week eight. So pretty tough schedule. And week nine, they have Giants, and then they play against Vitality. So it's a little bit all over the place as well, but they have a Fnatic game in there, uh, first of all. They have a Vitality game as well. Do you think they keep third place? They're currently one win ahead of Schalke and Vitality. I think they will keep third place so for now. So we have it for now, but I mean, we're trying to predict I mean, after week nine. The the I mean, the thing is, like, I don't know how, if, if they'll learn the game. <laughs> if, if they do, then of course they will keep it. But um, if it, if they keep going at the pace, like what they did with Jankos and what he did for in the Schalke game, because that was very, very funny to watch for a viewer. But uh, if he does that, then I think they will drop from third. Okay. Okay. So Nukta, who do you put third place? I mean that that's very hard though. I, I I feel like it's almost like impossible to predict, you know, because I, I think it will be like a toss up between almost everyone. Okay. If we go third, I think like Vitality looks like quite strong right now too. Okay. Uh, I think we have a shot at third place too, and I I even think like Spice probably could go third too. Hmm. Maybe but maybe less likely because they're from like one win less. One win less. So it's interesting you say Vitality looks strong because uh, last episode with uh, Brox and Whippo. We actually did, or Drakus and the guys, they did uh, a power ranking of how they view all the teams in Europe. Uh, it is behind me right now. And they put Vitality, as I'm double checking while still talking into the mic, they put them C tier and said, these guys are not good. They don't know what to do. They're just grouping five men mid and running at you. Like old unicorns are love style. Mm -hmm. You disagree with this? Uh, or is it just a change of kickers? No, I mean, it's like when they started losing, they were, you know, doing that, but they, they don't normally do that. I think they actually play, like, they play quite well most of the time. Okay. I think maybe, like, Fnatic, they, maybe they put people to a bit higher standard, you know, because, like, they're, like, the best team right now. But I, I, I think they're pretty good. Okay. Kasing, do you agree with Vitality potentially fighting for third place? No. You think they're bad? I mean, UK, I'm telling you right now, usually, right, we lose to them on, in regular set because... I don't know, we just have like mental block versus them. But the last game we played against them, I felt like, I mean, maybe that was with, that was with Gilius, right? If I remember. Uh, so they only played with Kickers this week. Yeah, okay. Then it was with Gilius. So maybe they were just having a lot of problems during that week. But I felt like that vitality, or the vitality that we've always played against was that they try to snowball from lanes. But this time, they're like, kind of like misfits, but except they like to group mid, no matter what. They kind of uh, sometimes just leave the sideways. They don't give a shit about it. Oh. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they just group mid, hope they can get a catch, and then you know try team fight. And I think it was the game that we played against them recently was just the fact that even though they were so behind, like three or four k gold or five k gold, they just tried to fight anyway, which is kind of weird because considering if you're in that position where you're behind, right, you want to kind of farm and wait for your power spike and then try to fight and have a chance. But with vitality playstyle, it's just kind of if you're snowballing, then it's really really good. Like one of the best snowballing playstyles, in my opinion. But if you're not ahead, then you should kind of adapt, you know, and play differently. Can I challenge you a little bit? Because Splice as a team, it does not feel like you guys have more plays in your playbook than Vitality. It's not necessarily to group five men instantly and run it down mid, but 
it's rare I've seen you guys be very successful playing like a lot of different styles. Like Spring Spade, you found a lot of success with like the, the late game comms. Yeah. I feel like now it's <clears throat> still kind of the same. Like, do you feel you guys are better than Vitality then? I think we are better. And regarding our playstyle or like stylistically on, on stage, there has come some cons that I feel like we should be able to perform or like what's it called? Execute off or execute the, the draft. But we just kind of aren't able to do it on stage because of the fact that we kind of sometimes we just forget what the game plan is. And I think that's it's not good obviously to to just uh to lose a game based on the fact that I think personally most of our drafts is winnable. It's not okay. like something that, you know, you, once you drafted this, you've lost. But maybe the H game was was kinda like that. But regardless of that, um <laughs> well, maybe it might have been against Schalke. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but like regardless of that, I just feel like most of the time we we should have a uh, we have a clear game plan, but then after when in game stuff changes and you, you should be able to change and adapt, right? But then it doesn't and then we lose. I've been mm. Maybe for me, because I'm 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 pretty biased with the way I'm saying my my stuff about splice right now. It's just the fact that I know we can kind of execute it, but we don't do it on stage, and then it looks pretty bad. Which is interesting because you have a lot of veterans. You know, you'd think there's a lot of people who who are able to remember a game plan and kind of lead the team around, but yet. I mean, the thing is, like, even, on the ground. <laughs> sometimes even with constant reminders and stuff, it's just we're unable to pull the trigger, which is the problem. Right. And yeah. I, I just think because of that, we're unable to to win sometimes. Is Splice better than Vitality, Nuke Duck? I mean, I, he's trying to convince me, but I, I'm not sure. I, I feel like Vitality... It scares me the whole drop in the game plan randomly. Kind yeah, of. this is a bad sign, but, but I actually... <laughs> I'm improving on that, don't worry. <laughs> that happened at Refrables. <laughs> but I actually want to come to Vitality's defense even on the Splice game because... They, their comp was, you know, like they put like Irelia, Kled, Sidrani, and they were actually facing against like a, a poke comp basically. So, I mean, I actually think their best shot is to like to, to team fight basically. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know if what they did was like that that bad, you know. I mean, it didn't work out because they, they, they were getting, you know, like murdered everywhere on the map. But I feel like that, that might have been their best shot to win actually. So, so overall, we have Nuketok supporting Vitality. We have. <laughs> Okay, saying supporting Spice in this case, instead of ranking number four, five, and six, because as you guys say, it is it is so random. Let's just agree on which teams do not make the top six right now. H two K, we can probably, probably pretty safely lock yeah. in unless anyone wants to make some insane argument. Uh, Giants down the bottom as well. They just lost to Unicorns last week. Done. Pretty much. Yeah. I think. I mean, even though they can technically win all their games or something, but it's still how do I say it? They they aren't able to close out games at all, mm -hmm. which is pretty pretty sad because, you know, they have gotten leads in a lot of games, actually, but they're just unable to translate that. Not the late-game kings is what you're trying to say. I mean, if you try that hard to put the perspective that you're a late-game king and then unable to play the late game, it's kind of... It's a bit of an issue. <laughs> Definitely a poor branding. Not like Year of the Duck. Much better branding right there. <laughs> uh, Unicorns of Love currently sitting, if I look at the standings, number eight. They are two wins behind Splice and Rocket. Obviously, Splice and Rocket, one of you guys are currently in playoffs. You are tied, uh, so whatever. But Unicorns are two wins behind, three wins behind Schalke and Vitality. I keep hearing that they're doing well in scrims. I keep hearing from other pros that oh unicorns they're really tough to play against they're actually very good you know people are using them as like a dark horse that can make it into playoffs but it feels like they're too far behind and also on stage i'm not seeing the positive things that people are saying uh, they, they i don't think they can make it they're done yeah, yeah i think they're definitely done is it because they're bad or is it just because they're too far behind I, I think they're worse and they're behind so i think yeah it will be it will be a miracle, I think, if they make playoffs. Simply like that. Cool. Well, we have uh, we have to choose between a couple of teams then for the last spot in playoffs. Rocket, Splice, Schalke, Vitality. Yeah, I think that Rocket won't make it. Rocket will not make it? Yeah. I think... The thing is, like, I know this week Vitality have played Kikis and they went 2-0, but I still felt like those wins weren't, you know, they weren't decisive wins. And I'm not sure... Obviously, if I mean it's hard to say because I feel like Rocket they can be good, and it, uh, we've seen they we hear that every week as well. Yeah, but that's the thing is like they just 
haven't been good. <laughs> but they, I don't know. It's hard to say. But I feel like it's a, it's a, it's between Vitality and Rocket for the last play. I think us and Schalke will probably make four or five. But I, I don't know about six. Hmm. I feel like there's some bias with the Splice one. Like, I want to believe because you guys have been winning a lot of games. I mean, I'm just saying. I, what, what do you want him to say? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not I just say Splice will make playoffs? What am I doing? Yeah, say, so, nah, we suck, you know, there's no way we can do it. All right, so we put Rocket outside for you, Nuke Dog, and yeah. between Rocket and Vitality uh, for you, Kissing, and, and that's going to be our top six uh, for now. Or, Who's not making? It's actually a horrible list we've made so far because we haven't really locked in a whole lot on number one and two, but the discussion is worth it. That's that's what I'm going to say because I actually have to move us on now. Sadly, no more playoff discussions. Instead, we need to briefly discuss names because we have obviously one person here who has a name that I assume was created when he was young. 10, 11 years old. It's Nuke Duck, which... Do you still think it's a cool name? Um, I mean, if I could make a name today, I probably wouldn't make this You wouldn't name. make Nuke yeah, Duck? Yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't. Let's put it like that. <laughs> but I, I don't mind it too much. You know, it's been with me that long. So. Yeah, because what's the story on the name? Because, I mean, it is actually a cool name. It's just a... It, it's not, you know, it's a pretty, pretty childish name. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I mean, I made it when I was like, yeah, as you said, like 11, 12. I was just playing Dota and I, like... In Dota, you don't call it like burst champions, you call it like nuke champions, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I had a lot of fun playing those, you know, like just like one-shotting people and then like laughing. This is basically what I was doing when I was like <laughs> 11, 12, because I didn't know like actually how to play the game, you know? I okay. just tried to kill people. And then I just like want to have a name with nuke in it and then like I just put duck as well, I don't know. Did uh, you love ducks or? No, not, not really. <laughs> like it was just like, it's like a four-letter word, like I don't know. Okay. It just like, it sounded cool back then, you know? <laughs> What about Kissing? Um, actually, Kissing is my middle name, so it's quite standard. Oh, okay. But the thing is, I noticed uh, in Europe, uh, in Europe at the time, there was no, you know, no actual imports or anything. It was just Europeans, right? And I felt like in when I watched like China, China and uh, Korea, they have like their names as their kind of uh, uh, ID. So I felt like Kissing might be cooler. But that's only because of the fact that I got told by right I had to change my name before that, which was uh, Yero or Yero Star. Which is uh, maybe, maybe is a bit of an old school name, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember when you were called that. I was like, "This that's a weird name, man." I mean, the thing is, like, my name was actually it's it's so weird because in Dota, because you were trying to meme on Yellow Star, right? No, 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 no. In Dota, I was called like Yellow Star. Oh, so you actually were called Yellow Star? Yes, but then I had to change to Yellow. Then I had to change to sorry. Then I changed to Yellow Star. Then Yellow, but I didn't know who Yellow Star was before. Because I never watched pro scene or anything. I only played League for fun with my friends. Okay. And then I named myself Yellow Star, right? Because Yellow Star was taken. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that Yellow Star was Yellow Star, <laughs> basically. Really famous. Yeah. So it's kind of a coincidence. But like, honestly, at the time, I played a lot of Dota for like five or six years, back when I was like maybe 11 or 12. And yeah, I mean, I came from Dota to League. And I only played League because of the fact that it was the only game that could run on my PC. Like my PC was really, really bad. And even though I said League, like when I first played it, the graphics was so bad. I, I not remember that. how, how yeah, terrible yeah, yeah. it was. But after a while, I just, I don't know, it just grew on me, you know? And then I wanted to, to, to level and all that stuff and everything was cool because you can get like new champions, blah, blah, blah. But after that, I basically ha I had Yero Star since the beginning. And then I changed to Yero for a time. And that's when I played in the Super Bowl crew at first time in LCS called uh, Yero. But then Riot told me I had to kind of change my name because it was maybe not the best name in in League. <laughs> Kissing is a good name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. It's my it's my actual name. So yeah, would be if I if I flamed the name, it would be pretty bad, I guess. I guess it is actually. I mean, name. You, you can if you want. <laughs> so Nuke Duck, you said uh, if you could make a name now, you would probably not go with Nuke Duck. Um, so I had Drake has come up with some uh, options already. Um, one of them is. Uh, Hardstock LCS Pro. <laughs> no? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe not too bad. Kissing, I'm, uh, please also give your opinion if you hear any good names for him. Then he tried to combine uh, weapon plus animal. A little bit like, not that Nuke is a weapon, but kind of like Nuke Duck. All right, yeah. 
AK-47 Badger. <laughs> this actually sounds better, too. Than right, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, Roger Goose. Roger Goose. So two, two, uh, two animals now. Apparently. Yeah. I like the AK-47 one. You like, like AK-47 Badger like more? Bang to it. Yeah. All right. Desert Eagle Eagle. <laughs> What? <laughs> These are Drake's names. He's very sick, by the way, so I have no clue what he's been doing. But uh, There's an eagle eagle. If we had to pick one of those four names, which one do we go with? Is it AK-47 Badger? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe. Uh, the Dusted Eagle Eagle. It sounds quite quite funny, too. That one is pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah. Desert Eagle Eagle. If anyone else has any opinion on which name Nuke Duck should aim for, if he ever needs to name change uh, between AK-47 Badger and Desert Eagle Eagle... Please let us know. Uh, we actually have some names for you as well, Kissing. Really? Yeah. Uh, in case you ever wanted to name change again. <laughs> uh, one of them is uh, Giggles. Giggles? Yeah. Oh, my Pretty Lord. Pretty cute. That <laughs> fits your... That, that name is so... You know, I'm just going to say, yeah, it sounds cute. Yeah, it's pretty good, right? But I would not take that. No? What about Lil Ray? Lil Ray? It was like a rapper name, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> Never consider that? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think I can rap, actually. Like, I really can't, hmm. unfortunately. You ever tried? No, I haven't. Do you want to try? But I don't want to, no. No, okay. No, no, no. I feel like this could be a bet, you know? I think, yeah. <laughs> some rapping is, I know Dracos is a great rapper, so... Oh, uh, uh, whatever. If it ends up being you two against uh, me and Dracos, I know I can just stand in the background being the guy doing, like, the beatboxing, and then Dracos can actually rap. And I guess with you, who would be the rapper? I mean, Lil Ray will be the rapper. Lil, Lil Ray will be the rapper, I think yeah. AK-47 Badger is quite good at <laughs> That's a good rapper name, too, as well. <laughs> All right, we got the last one. Is Everybody Loves Raymond. If you ever saw that show. Yeah, I used to watch it when I was Yeah, I used to watch it. It's kind of lame name, Drake. You could it, definitely it better than that. It is pretty, pretty lame. He also put greatest support ever. It's like, apparently it's memeing your interview. Oh, right. The one with the... the, the yeah, it was with me and you, right? I feel like that's kind of lame. I mean, if if it was... If you were named that, I think that would be free. Great support ever. Yeah. That's, I remember. Self-irony. Yeah, there you go. That's a good <laughs> name. I think the, the Nuke Dog names were a little bit better. Uh, yes. You can clearly see that Dracos had a little bit of uh, focus when he wrote those, and then he just crashed completely when he got to yours. Uh, anyway, AK-47 Badger and Kissing, we will move <laughs> forward. And instead, uh, a thing that is often discussed by casters is shock calling. And who is the shock caller? Who is the leader? Almost every single time when we then ask the team to get actual information on it, they say, no, no, everyone talks. Everyone is equal. No one like leads everyone else. Uh, I know obviously back in the, in the day, a long time ago, you could typically have one or two guys maybe being the vocal ones and the rest didn't necessarily say too much. But how do you guys view the whole idea around shock calling now? Like, is it something where it's great to have one guy doing it, or is it just necessary that every single player is able to actually do it? Well, I think it's important that every player can, you know, understand at least, like, exactly, like, why you would call for this and this. Uh, but if you have someone that can, you know, like, overreach and, like, play well themselves and, like, give commands, that that's obviously the best. But this is very hard to, you know, shot call while playing, like, really well yourself, mm -hmm. I think. So it, it just depends on the people on the team, I think. Okay, so everyone needs to be able to communicate, but having one guy with, you know, a little bit more focus on the actual shot calling is not a bad thing. Yeah, I, I think if you have one guy that is, like, actually shot calling, this guy is basically, like, carrying the whole game, you know? Do we have that guy in Schalke? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say so. We have, like, different situations uh, where people are vocal. So, like, um, Maurice is, like good at shot calling like in general the game so he, he's let's say the main like let's say shot caller mm -hmm. i think and then there are like he, he's good in really good in early and late game and then in mid game it's more me and chachi i think and then of course everyone's giving input of and course. plans about their own lanes yeah same for you guys kissing or um actually we have more of a, a no, we have like a hierarchy kind of thing where most of the time it's like kind of between me and Zerxe, but Zerxe is the type of jungler that kind of, he's a, actually a smart jungler. He he like does a lot. Well, we play around his jungle path a lot and we understand like, you know, we basically play kind of for Zerxe most of the time and he basically shock calls what he's going to do and what, we, what he can do for us. 
And obviously everyone can give the info, right? In the early game. But when mid game comes or mid late, then it's kind of just me and Odo. Mm -hmm. Like Odo obviously can, he's just really, uh, he has a, a loud voice most of the time. So it, I've heard him yell on stage it, sometimes. It, it does. Yeah. You can hear it. It sounds quite loud. So like sometimes, you know, his course does uh, kind of feel like, you know, because it's louder, therefore you should listen to it, right? But sometimes <laughs> that's not, that shouldn't be the case. But yeah, that's the thing where most of the time it's like kind of between me and Odo. For like calling out mid mid game objectives and stuff, but obviously with Niski and Kobe, they're a bit more uh, le less vocal, but they obviously give the relevant input when needed. So does it hold a player back when he has to focus on shot calling? Like, does it make it way harder to play the game for you, Noob Dog, in the mid to late game if you have to start doing more of the overall calling, or are you at that point now where you can do, you you can both you know play hundred percent and also read the map and talk? Uh, I think it will definitely hurt you if you have to do it all, but for me it's more like I, I'm not sh comfortable shot calling unless like I know that I got you know my, my stuff under control first. So for me, it's, I think like the more like shot calling you have, the better. So it just depends like if you're able to do like what you have to do and like also lead the team, then this is just a bonus, I think. Okay. Because I think, I mean, on G2 right now, we talked about them earlier, not doing so well. I think Perks is, is a player where, you know, there's a lot of focus on him. You know, he's he's the veteran on the team in a way that's kind of built around him. Um, and he obviously, there's a lot of responsibility on, on him as a player. Like, is that unfair to then criticize sometimes if he's not performing 100% individually as well because he has so many other responsibilities? Or is it just like he should be able to do everything? I mean, I know for sure, like, being as a shot caller, it's kind of harder to play the game because of the fact that you're not really 100% focused on your, your champion, your mechanics, your decision-making because you're kind of making decisions for other people, right? You're kind of, like, microing them in terms of what they're doing on the map. So, for me anyway, maybe because I'm a support, so it's easier for me. Yeah. But I feel like there are times when if I'm playing a champion that I need to focus on, but I also need to shot call, then maybe I play considerably worse. And it's not that you know, that once you start speaking, then you're going to play bad, right? It's not, it's not an excuse. You should still be able to do it. But you just have to get used to it, in my opinion, and kind of practice it again and again that you're talking whilst playing. So, hmm. I mean, I think it's, it is kind of unfair because I feel like Perks is one of the, the star players there. And if he's also shockling, I don't know if he is. I just mean more like, this is a lot of pressure on him. And I mean, he's a vocal player. Uh, and I know they do rely a lot on him, but obviously don't know if he's the guy doing everything. I don't assume he's the only one talking. But if, if he is, then he is like so insane 1v9, you know? We should assume like, everyone else. I know Jana yeah. has been a vocal member in the past as well. Yeah, if you, but if you expect Perks to like play like as he normally does, like one of you know the very best and shot goal the whole team, then this guy is just like that insane. <laughs> you know? Like then yeah. if he can reach that standard every game, he's like super insane. Is there a way to properly practice shot calling? Is it just like do it over and over or? I think you just have to get used to the fact that you're pretty much explaining what you're doing, what the team is doing, what the enemy can do, what you can do about it, and also play. Like those five things, you have to keep that always in mind. That's what I do anyway, anyway. Yeah, I, I think it's also really good to like look at our games or like your own replays and mm -hmm. look like this situation, what, what is like the best like team play we can do here, you know, like do we need this guy to push this wave or not? And then I, I think it's really helpful to like actually go over that with the team so they like they really know why you're calling something. Right. So if you have like a macro play like uh, in your head, you should like show a replay and show like this is why this will work now and then everyone will be like, much like easier on board with it when you when you say it in the game. That makes sense because obviously it makes it a lot easier if you don't have to micro explain every move and just be like, yeah, that's not gonna work. We play for bot tower now. Everyone knows what to do uh, around it. That's very cool because it's always a very interesting discussion. And I know obviously in the past um, there's been some criticism uh, for you know some of the teams uh, you've been on Nuke Duck where people have been saying it's passive, no one does anything. You know, is that something where you feel like that's been always been, is, is that a shot calling thing or is that more like players just doesn't function or are some players just more passive in the way they want to play? Uh, well, yeah. So when I like came back to the LCS on Rockgut, like I 
like I was for the most part, you know, like shot calling in season three. But then the meta became way more like support jungle focused as like lane swaps became mm -hmm. a thing. So it was like extremely hard for me to, you know, like see what was going on in like a lane swap scenario while laning. So I wanted to take more of a backseat, you know, so I wanted to join Rockal and I and I hope like they will like they will have the shot calling, you know, and I can just be like plug and play and try to like purely focus on my own uh, like gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, so like as a result of that, I was not really like a f force at all in like shot calling or something like that for like that year or and it even like hurt me a bit after but now lately i'm trying to become more back to like try to take a more like leader role in the game all right that's good to know that's very interesting um i want to move us on to uh the last big topic we do have which is match of the week this week it's on saturday it's the last game we play it is g2 versus Fnatic, uh, the biggest kind of game between two teams in Europe we have right now, almost no matter where they are in the standings. When Fnatic and G2 play each other, they've won every single title except for one. For some reason, Alliance was in there, just grabbing one and failing at Worlds, and then they disappeared forever. But uh, with G2 versus Fnatic, you guys already mentioned before that Fnatic are just insane. Like, what is it about Fnatic that is so good right now? I think their players are like really insane. You know, they got cups. Uh, he's like right now is definitely like better form than Perks. Okay. And then even just from that, it, it should be hard for G2 to do much. You know, because they need Perks to be. Uh, he he needs to be doing well. You know, in order for them to win. I, I don't think they they win that many games when he's not doing well. And then on top of that, Fnatic just they don't have any weak points. They play like extremely well together. And I think yeah, their support and mid are just like both like quite insane. Do you, think, do you agree Fnatic are just the best, the greatest, your favorite team? Mm, I, I kind of agree. I feel like Fnatic, they're kind of different compared to other LCS teams, just the fact that they just are able to play the game like really, really on a really high level. But also the fact that I feel like their synergy is also really, really good. Like most teams, their synergy between X players are not great, right? Like they, maybe they have better synergy with two players individually. But I feel like the entire team kind of know what they want to do. Like they're all on the same page whilst also being able to play for the next objective instantly. Mm -hmm. I feel like Fnatic always reacts like almost reactively, uh, instantly reactively to whatever play you want to do. And they try to do it faster. And I feel like that's what makes Fnatic really good. It's not the fact that, you know, they're just really good players. But I think as uh, uh, as five, they know how to play the game in a uh, at a level where I feel they're always first to the next objective. And that's what makes them really good, in my opinion. What's the weakness of this current Fnatic team then? Uh, well, it could be that, you know, they don't have like that big like carry potential top perhaps, uh, or like that, that like lane, good in lane. But at the same time, this is like part of their, you know, like team identity. Yeah. So it, 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 it barely could be a weakness, I think. Like I, it's hard for me to spot right now. Okay. Because I feel like that's rare that we have players being like, you know, we can't really find a huge weakness that we could punish. I feel like there's typically always something, but it is interesting with the way Fnatic is right now. Because in the agree, there's no like clear weakness. <laughs> I think the weakness is actually, um, I mean, Caps is really good, but his weakness is also just the fact that he always keeps playing aggressive. And I feel like maybe one day he will get punished for it. But right now he has a jungler and a support in his lane level one. Yeah, but I guess you're level two, <laughs> level three, level four. Shouldn't that make up for him playing aggressive? Like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like I feel like Fnatic. They always try to use like not cheeses, but they do these strategies. Level one or level two or three, and to get their main carry caps ahead. And once he's ahead, then he can definitely take over a game, right? But I feel at the same time. If the enemies kind of know what you're gonna kind of, oh, they know what kind of what to expect, then I feel like you can kind of still match them, provided you kind of know what they do. You know, if you know what I mean. So I assume you guys are 100 percent in the Fnatic will win this game. Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> so that sets up the the challenge then uh, for you guys right now. If G2 are going to win this game, how are they going to win? Um, I think they. They have to put Wanda on a carry, first of all, okay? And they put their bot lane on a self-sufficient bot lane, like Tom or not Pike, maybe, because, yeah, they, they didn't do so well. But I feel like their bot lane is always reliable to, to be free or, like, just be able to push waves and mm -hmm. kind of not let their opponents 
player on both sides. But I feel like Pugs and Yankos kind of have to step up in terms of like the synergy, especially. I feel like they're kind of not on the same page most of the time in terms of wanting to fight at X time. Because I'll take the Schalke game as an example, right? I feel like most of the time it was kind of Yankos engaging when the team is not ready or like just not being at the wrong place. Yeah, I was about to say, enemy support has already left the bot lane. You probably shouldn't walk into the river. Yeah, I mean, it's just the fact fighting. that you, you disrespect the fact that enemies can be there or you kind of f feel like... I don't know, I just feel like they're not talking about what they want to do or what they're doing or what the enemies are doing. And then after it becomes like, oh, I'm surprised that Alistair is here now. And yeah, just I feel like they just need to talk more if they want to win. Just talk more, sustaining bot lane, carry top. Yeah. Yes, and they have to win early game, definitely. Have to win early game. Yeah, yes. through top lane then, or just pretty mid to top. Mid to top. Yeah, always mid. So that's basically the win condition for G two is win early, solo and, lane and need respect to do support. well. <laughs> support roams. <laughs> respect support roams. Is there anything else, Nuke? You want to add to how G two wins this game? Uh, nah, it's basically that they have to like get ahead top, and then I mean, if they can get ahead mid two, that would be great, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. If it's going to happen. Uh, is it annoying for you guys that Fnatic, without Reckless, are still the best team in Europe? Uh, no, no, not for me. I, I think Vipo is like, like actually as good as Reckless on bottom. I mean, right now I think Vipo is like the best bottom laner, maybe. Mm -hmm. He's even uh, practicing a lot of ADC in solo queue nowadays. Okay, so he's ready for a potential meta shift. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it, it doesn't hurt them. Like right now, from like the current champion pool, I think he's just actually the best bot laner. Okay, interesting. So, do you think, like, just to last part with the reckless thing, like, if we went back to like MSI meta and and this whole like mages bot lane wasn't a thing, like, and it was reckless playing, you think Fnatic would just been the same as right now in terms of like how good they are compared to the rest of the teams? Obviously, that would be with Whippo top lane, probably, uh, or him and Source swapping in and out. Or would they just be even better? Um, I don't think they'll be that much better, actually. Because I feel like one of the things that Whippo bought was the fact that he was really, really good on like all the other champions. Mm -hmm. But Reckless will take at least like 200 games to get better at X champion. But that's the thing. It's, like, it's not that he's bad, but it's just the fact that if you're a top lane main and you've played these champions already, then why wouldn't you put that guy on the role rather than the guy who has to practice everything? And I think the synergy between Reckless and Hillisang wasn't like super great, but I think between Bipo and Re uh, Hillisang right now, I think it's actually really good. So, yeah, I also think they're actually like better now than what they would have been. Okay, like they they would have to play a different play style, and like the one they're playing now, they're like extremely good on. I mean, it depends if, you know, Reckless would just, like, learn to play the new champions instead of, you know, just quitting. But, but yeah, I don't know what he would play. I wonder what's going to happen if uh, if the patches continue where they buff AD carry items and buff other AD carries as well. Like, if we hit a point where it's just AD carries bot lane again over the next couple of weeks, I'm not sure which direction they want to take it 100%. Or if now we will always have, you know, Swain and these kind of things viable uh, down the lane. But if it becomes pure AD carries... I assume they're going to swap Re Reckless back. But if you're saying Withrow is already practicing AD carries and the synergy is better, like maybe there's a world where they keep him bottling, even if it goes back to being traditional AD carries. I think that's going to be interesting to follow. Uh, obviously, last split, Reckless was a huge part of the success of the team. They 3 0 at the final. It's hard to argue that they could have done much better, at least in the spring split. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, Fnatic G2, it is Saturday. Last game of the day, we have two people on this desk saying Fnatic will 100% win. We have to do a bet around Fnatic G2, like it is the game. <laughs> and I have a feeling that Drakus and myself will be forced to go on G2's side. Unless there's something in the game we can make a bet around. Is it around who wins the mid lane or who wins the bot lane or something? I don't know. Or do, we, do you guys want to do Fnatic versus G2 just who wins the actual series? That has to be the series, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And I assume you guys get fanatic. You get fanatic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. I would like fanatic. Great. Okay. Then Dracus and myself will get G two. Note: I will not pick G two in my actual predictions for the oh, broadcast because okay. I need to beat Vedius. I kind of lose to him. That would be sad. So I have to still pick fanatic there. But uh, punishment. There was some rapping before. 
I personally oh cannot rap at all. <laughs> uh, our producer, Phil, uh, our great producer, who is the guy who sets up so many things for us, has also suggested getting duck costumes. And you have uh, to wear them when you do whatever it is our punishment is. Now, if you don't want to do rapping, we could just do like we did with the Ode Amne one, where we have to walk around pretending we are ducks for like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and we upload it on the internet if we lose. Or do you want to do rapping, five seconds rap with duck costumes on? Rapping ducks? <laughs> yes. Has this, how low we've gone? <laughs> this is, we have gone really far out now. A lot of the fans oh. also requested something with duck costumes. So we kind of have to do. I mean, I guess we can dress up as ducks because of, you know. Because we are the duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the year of the duck. <laughs> So do you want to do rapping? Do you want to dance? Do we want to just do something dumb in duck costumes? Like Noob Dog, what, what do you say? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to rap. That's, that's the main thing I want to say. But yeah, we can do a dance or whatever stupid yeah, stuff you guys come no, up Yeah, no with. rapping. <laughs> okay, some stupid dance slash walk around, pretend we're, we're ducks for like a couple of seconds and we upload it. That's, that's our punishment. We'll get the costumes. Uh, Fnatic versus G2. You two will say Fnatic. Drakers and myself, and I'm sure Drakers would love this. <laughs> we'll grab G2 Esports. Yeah. And like, if we win this, like, if G2 win that game, yeah. we're going to make sure you guys do like a long video, you know, <laughs> and it's going to be in the studio. Me and Drake is going to be in it, probably taking care of you guys or something, chasing you around. You know, like people like to chase ducks around. Throwing yeah. bread. Yeah, you're throw bread. Yeah, we'll probably throw some bread <laughs> in your face. Like, that's going to be a lot of stuff happening if G2 win this. That's 100% for sure. But that match of week, it is Saturday. Everyone, it's going to be pretty hype. Uh, if G2 win also, they might be able to challenge Fnatic for that potential first place you guys are predicting they will grab at the end of uh, end of the regular season. Will they win playoffs as well? Fnatic? Yeah. Uh, it's, I'm not sure. It's too early to say. Not sure about that one. It's still too early to say. And Schalke and Splice will make playoffs? I yeah. hope so, yeah. You hope so? You were pretty convinced earlier. So. I mean, I, ho I really hope so. Otherwise, you know... <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> sad times, isn't it? All right. Oh, you still go Gauntlet, though. Oh, wait, there's Gauntlet? Yeah, yeah there's that, Gauntlet. That's the oh, thing. yeah, that's I the forgot thing about, about that. this whole thing is that actually we need Rocka to not go to playoffs. Yes, because they have some points from spring. Yes. You guys have zero points. I, I, I mean, the point is that uh, Vitality and Spice, they actually have more points than what you would get for dropping out in quarterfinals in summer. Yes. So if Spice or, like, let's say Rocka makes it. And us and Rock are dropping quarters, and Vitality or Splice are, mm -hmm. you know, not in playoffs, then we will not go to the gauntlet. Because we will be 15 points then. Isn't the gauntlet based on who goes playoffs, though? Uh, no. It is not. It is based on how points. many points you have. But yeah. if you're tied with someone else, yeah. the, the team who got the most points in the summer split will get the gauntlet spot. Okay. Um, and we used in the, in the past when we had relegation. If you, if you got into relegation, your points would just get removed. So, but we don't obviously have relegation right now. So even if Rocket ended like number ten or something, there's still a world where they could make no. the gauntlet as number ten. No, they can't make the gauntlet. Then they can't make the gauntlet because, like, spring gives less points, right? So there is no way they could have more points than any of the four teams that dropped in summer playoffs. But we'll have two teams who will advance. Yeah, four teams. You're correct. Yeah. Right, Nuke Duck has read up on the rules. Yeah, don't question the duck. Let's cut <laughs> cut this part of it. Uh, that was definitely not necessary. But four teams in the gauntlet. But Vitality and Splice can, which is why we need them to make They playoffs. can, okay. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, with the amount of points you got, you should be almost guaranteed a gauntlet spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I completely forgot about gauntlet. But obviously, you still want to get the highest seed in the gauntlet, so you end up only having to play one best of five, ideally. And for anyone who doesn't know when the gauntlet is, it's going to be right after the spring final. So I believe it's like the 14th, 15th of September. Three days in a row, bam, winner goes to Worlds as the third seed. So uh, that's why I like uh, Summer Split. There's like three teams who are super happy with the season at the end of it, super proud, ready to go to Worlds, and there's seven teams going on holiday, half of them pretty pissed, and the other half happy they don't have to play more League of Legends yeah. for a couple of months, and they can relax before the new season starts. So who makes it uh, all the way to this final? Quick predictions. Final? Um... Uh, Misfits and Fnatic would be the obvious one, but if we don't play Fnatic in the semi-final, I think we can go to the final. Don't play the Fnatic in the semi-final. Schalke can make the final. 
on the side of Splice. Mm. See, it's not too bad not to say your team. Like, it's not offensive to say we will only make a <laughs> semifinal or something. Like, I mean, the thing is, I think honestly, if we if we don't play against uh, G2, I think we can actually make it to the finals. Not against G2. Because G2 actually do quite well against us. But you can be Fnatic in a semifinal. I think we can, yes. Interesting. A lot of good predictions are being thrown around here. Let's uh, wrap up the whole thing. We've gone way past an hour at the moment. Sorry. Just, no problem. You guys have done great. Quick uh, summary of certain things. The bet is Fnatic versus G2. Nuke Duck and Kissing on Fnatic. Drake's and myself on G2. Duck costumes. Walk around, get bread thrown in your head and whatever happens with ducks. That's basically what's going to happen with the bet. No matter, you know, <laughs> who wins, someone is going to do something dumb. That's for sure. Uh, Nuke Duck has a new name. AK-47 Badger is the one we agreed on, I believe. Or Desert uh, Eagle Eagle. Uh, There's an Eagle Eagle. <laughs> Kissing keeps his name because he's boring. And the predictions for playoffs. We had Nuke Duck saying Rocket will not make playoffs. And Kissing said either Rocket or Vitality. So... That's basically it uh, from us today. New episode next week as well. Uh, remember, you can watch this YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, iTunes. I don't know why I say this at the end of the podcast, because I assume people have already figured that out, seeing as they've watched the entire podcast. Yeah. But in case you tune in just for the bottom half of it, uh, you know, we have a full episode here. This is the first time I've actually had to end the podcast. There's always Drake is doing it. So I'm messing it up completely. Please save me, guys, and say goodbye to the viewers so I can stop talking. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Goodbye, guys. Thank you for listening. Goodbye, everyone.